Let's learn how to make a quick ripped paper effect that you can apply to pretty much anything inside of Photoshop. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to use a Photoshop brush pack that I have made and you can download for free to create this cool ripped paper effect that as you can see you can apply to pretty much anything including text. So uh, without any further ado we're going to jump right into this. Um, the first thing I did was make these Photoshop brushes. As you can see I actually made them from ripping up real paper, um, scanning those in, adjusting some of the uh, properties inside of Photoshop and then uh, exporting them as their own brush pack. If you're interested in the process of making Photoshop Photoshop brushes um, let me know in the comments below and I'll consider making a tutorial for that specific thing but for now the first step you need to do is go to gumroad.com forward slash tip tut and click on the ripped paper photoshop brush pack to download it type a zero in so you can get it for free you can consider donating to help support the channel but it's absolutely not mandatory add it to your cart download the free brush pack and import it into photoshop to do that you can just click your brush library the three lines next to it and choose import brushes Choose Tip Tut Ripped Paper from the um, downloads list, click load, and it will create a folder with all of the brushes in it there for you. So without any further ado, let's crack right on. As you can see here, I've got a very, very simple composition. I've got a rectangle with the background, the word rip in Franklin Gothic font, and I have a color balance layer here that's just changing the colors a little bit um, because I realize I prefer the look of it. So. Um, what we're going to do is add a mask directly to this rectangle layer and we're going to start by just adding a crumpled paper effect to this background. So I'm going to press B to bring up my brush tool. I'm going to go over to the brush library and I'm going to choose paper page crumpled. And that's going to bring up a full A4 page of paper, which is um, crumpled. But however, as you can see, it's portrait at the moment. So I'm just going to go to my brush settings and rotate that by 90 degrees until I get a landscape brush, which covers our page like so. I'm going to invert my mask to make it black so it hides the entire layer. And then with a white brush, I'm just going to click once where the page crumple covers my entire canvas. As you can see, there is opacity on these brushes, which is how it gets the texture. So you can either reduce or increase the flow, or you can click twice if you want a stronger or a, or a weaker overlay like that, for example. Underneath this layer, I'm just going to create a completely black rectangle that's going to act as a base for all of our other layers. Push it to the bottom using control open square bracket. And you can see we've got our crumpled paper. Obviously, if you change the color of this background here, you can get all sorts of other different effects. Uh, for example, if I made it white, it would be a little bit brighter. If I made it yellow, it would let some of that yellow light creep through, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to make it black so we get pure black shadows. Great, that's the background all done. But you probably want to see how some of these other brushes work. So I'm going to add a new blank layer on top. Go to my brush library and I'm going to choose something like Paper Mid Rough. Um, and what Paper Mid Rough is, uh, is the middle of an A4 page ripped on both sides. If you know you chose Paper Edge, it'll be ripped only on one side, for example. I'm going to choose a nice bright yellow for my brush here. And I'm just going to click once on the edge of the page. And as you can see, my flow is at 100%, so it, um, it's going to basically fill in pretty much everywhere, which gives us a nice rough edge effect, but no texture on top. OK, uh, and that's by design so that you can choose to either have flat paper that is ripped at the edges. But if you want the crumple on top, it's really easy. You can just go and duplicate one of those masks by holding alt and dragging it over. OK, really simple. Um, or, of course, you could apply a different crumpled paper effect to it. Um, you could unlink the mask and move it around to change where and how it's crumpled. Um, or like I said, you can just paint yourself a new brush. I'm just going to shift this one over because then it looks like it's carrying on from the previous crumple as if there was a stack of paper and somebody has crumpled them. Uh, Relink that back up. And then I'm just going to add a simple drop shadow to this because obviously there would be a slight gap between these um, sheets of paper if this were real life. Uh, I'm not going to use global light. I'm going to have light coming down from the top right a little bit like this. Just increase the size and the softness just a touch, not too much. Otherwise, it starts to look a little bit unrealistic. And I find just adding just a touch of noise works well as well. Leave it on multiply. The opacity of that depends. But as you notice, the more opacity you bring in, the slight see-throughness of the layers will also add a nice crunchy texture as well to those layers there. So I'm going to leave that at about... 32%. That seems pretty good to me. Now, um, what this also means is um, if I go ahead and delete this layer mask, um, I can use the same brush again, rotated, or I can choose you know, a different brush here, like paper, um, edge, curve, concave. 
you know, very bold curved paper brush. And because we've got the um, uh, drop shadow applied to the layer, it's going to apply it to all of our brushes like so. Now, obviously, the direction is different, so it's not going to have too much light over there. But if that's something you want to fix, you could just change the direction of the light to come from above by double clicking on your effect and just changing the angle. Or you could swap it around to the other side and you'd have um, your paper shadow coming from the other direction. I'm just going to increase the distance and the size a little bit so that it comes in on both sides. And I think we'll leave it at that. That looks pretty good. So adding a crumpled background, super easy. Adding some super easy ripped paper effects, also super easy. Again, now that I've added that stuff, I can just duplicate the mask on that layer to bring in some texture on the top. Oops, excuse me, I didn't duplicate it. I just, there you go, didn't hold Alt there whilst I did that. Um, bring in some of that texture back on top. Okay, so this next step is to add the detail to the text. First thing I'm going to do is add a new blank layer on top. Um, grab my brush tool and go up to the paper page folded brush here. I'm going to make sure my brush is white. And I'm going to scale it down, uh, rotate it as well so that it's 90 degrees and therefore landscape. Scale that down and I'm just going to click boom like that. So you can see that we have our faded paper effect here. This looks a little bit like tissue paper um, because we've got that opacity, which is quite nice. I'm going to keep it. Obviously, again, if you don't want that, you just click twice to make the brush a little bit more opaque. So I'm going to do that until it scales over my text. I'm going to hit control click on this to uh, on the T of our rip layer to select just the content. And then I'm going to mask out that other layer. We can now hide our text underneath and we've got a nice folded crease down the middle of our text. What this also allows us to do as well is we've got content everywhere on this page now. So what we can do is on our mask layer here, come through with our ripped paper brushes, which will now have the texture of the folded page when we bring them in. Um, we can go and select some of these other brushes and use that to paint in the edges of our text. For example, if I choose paper segment misc, I made this one specifically so that it has a sort of soft ripped curve around the edge. I can just zoom in on my P and find a nice bit which lines up with the curve. Oops, <laughs> invert my brush first of all so that it's white and start bringing in the edges here. Like so, click a few times until the opacity matches up and you've got that nice ripped paper edge. So for example, now if I pop out my brush panel, might be a bit easier. I can have all my brushes up at once. And I think I'll push up, pop out my brush settings as well because I'll be rotating them quite a lot in this next section. And we'll just pop those underneath like so. Okay, then I can just rotate this brush a little bit or pick one of the other brushes. Till I get an angle that I'm happy with. And again, just start bringing in these um, extra sections. So we've got paper edge rough here. I can scale this down like so, rotate it 90 degrees. And we've got the rough edge of the top of our line as well. Um, if you get a section which doesn't quite line up, you can always tweak it off a little bit like here um, to maybe like 91. Uh, sorry, 89, not 91, it's the other way around. Uh, and which which will allow you to sort of create the edge section. And then you can always scale down to create a bit of variation as well or scale up. And indeed, you can see there the rough edges starting to come in. Now, I've got all sorts of different brushes here. Um, so let's use a few of the others. Paper Mid Rough, uh, which if we scale down, I think is quite, yeah, quite a bendy one. So again, you can on a straight edge, it's really easy. You could have a really ripped edge if you wanted to by just bringing it all the way out like so. Um, or you can scale it down to have a bit of a neater bit or finish off a bit of paper there, like so. There are plenty of brushes which have curves in them as well, like this convex curve, which is outwards curve, um, which is good for the edges of letters. Again, you can scale it down if you want something a little bit neater, or you can scale it up if you want something a little bit rougher. And you don't have to worry too much because you could always pre-compose, uh, pre-compose, sorry, after effect, uh, turn your, your text into a smart object um, and retain layer size and stuff that way. So you can see here I've got a straight edge coupled with a really curved one, which might be useful for the inside of the P. Something like this. And then I could rotate it again. Uh, oh, sorry, leave it on the angle it is and just use the rough edge over here. 
and up the top. And as you can see, because we used the folded paper as a mask, if I were to bring that in, the fold would still continue all the way through, which looks quite nice. Um, so it's just a case of going through your letters and adding these sections in. So I'll just do the other couple in fast forward so that you don't have to watch me do all three of them. But fear not, because releasing soon will be a ripped paper font, ripped paper bitmap font, which I'm working on. You can download that also from Gumroad, um, which will have all this section done for you uh, with its own font, and you can just type it out. So look forward to that. In the meantime, though, I'm just going to rush forward through these, and I'll see you on the other side of this little time. Piece. paper text finished. Uh, I just need to select this layer, add a similar um, drop shadow, not an outer glow, sorry, I accidentally just clicked outer glow there. Um, a similar drop shadow to our previous one. Um, maybe make this one a little bit darker to bring in some more of that texture, which should look quite nice. Uh, and there you have it, our ripped paper text effect. Now doing the text obviously takes a little bit of time, but uh, I can't really imagine too many scenarios where people would be doing it too much. If there is a specific one, like I say, look in the comments for a download link to the premium font, which I've created using this brush pack. Until then, no, feel free to download the free um, brush pack, have a load of time making stuff with it, and make sure to tag me on Instagram at tip.zone on, uh, with the stuff that you've made using this. I'm interested to see it. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Top. I'd like to take a moment to thank my level two and above members, Unknown Ghosts, WN62, Anonymous, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ralika M, Mun336, Ian Costello, and Dushant Singe. You guys are lovely and have access to all of the brilliant perks that other potential members might have, like discounts, access to the Discord, and shout outs at the end of videos, all just starting at 99 pence per month. What a bargain. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.